Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Awesome Build. And today, uh, just for the hell of it, I decided I want to build a cool cyberpunk sword. I don't know, I'm calling it a cyberpunk sword. I don't know, it's just a cool kind of industrial looking futuristic sword. Um, just something I've been wanting to do for a little bit. It popped in my head the other day. And so, yeah, just going to sketch something out. We're going to plot it out and then uh, build it. I'm just going to cut it all out of scrap wood and stuff like that and see how it all comes together. Alright, so we're at the sketch uh, table here. I'm just going to sketch out uh, my design. Um, and what I'm kind of using for inspiration is my pocket knife. I think it has a cool kind of industrial design, uh, cool angles on it and stuff. So this is going to be sort of my idea template for what I, what the angles I want to get, how I want the, the handle to look and stuff. Um, but I, obviously making it bigger and exaggerating certain elements while reducing others. Uh, but this is kind of like my inspiration sort of for the design. So after a bunch of sketches, um, all very in, in the same kind of vein, uh, I think this is the one I'm the most happy with. This is what I'm going to go with. Um, it incorporates kind of the, the serrated edge on the bottom there, the angle uh, I like. Um, this piece here I was going to have kind of in the middle of the blade, but um, I think it'd be cool to give it kind of a handle that it sticks out on the top of the blade and this back piece here too was just gonna was much smaller it's gonna be more decorative but actually I think having it larger um, so like you can use it in like a almost like in a completely different manner um, if you can grab that handle by the, the sword by the handle you can also grab it by like the back and the and this handle so we'll just get uh, get cracking I'll do the the larger sketch and a piece of paper that we'll use for our template and then uh, start cutting out all the pieces. All right, so I'm thinking um, that the size will roughly be about 40 inches, I think is a good size for the, the sword, or roughly around there, I don't know. Uh, so I got a piece of scrap uh, paper here that's about just over 40 inches, and so I'm just gonna start plotting out the the design that we came up with on the paper in more practical terms so I can get a get a gist I might have to you know shorten the handle or thicken the blade or, or something like that so um, yeah just start sketching out you know the, the basic shape and then I can start refining some of the details and stuff like that is our template or is this going to, going to be the template um, after a few little hiccups and stuff like that I think I'm happy with this I did a little bit of redesign here and there and um, changed the handle up a tiny bit but uh, in the back end it's a little bigger than I anticipated um, but this piece I have to build separately anyway um, so I'll kind of finish my redesign of that back piece uh, later, I guess. Yeah, I want as much of the handle, I wanted as much of the entire sword as I could out of one piece, uh, so it has some rigidity. Normally, I take a piece of dowel or something like that, and I'll cut the dowel to fit over the piece of wood, and then I'll screw it in and reinforce it and stuff with glue. Um, because this is going to be 
more angular and I want it to have a blockier uh, look and feel. I'm not using any doll or anything. And adding a separate piece, um, I, 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 I could do it, but I'd have to basically notch out a big chunk anyway. So I think by using as much of the uh, as, one, as much on one piece of wood as I can to get the blade and the handle, it's going to make it all that much more rigid and solid. And then, again, I'll use some like quarter inch or even maybe thinner um, MDF board and stuff like that to create the pattern on the outside and to give it that detailing and that'll actually help hold the rest of the handle to um, the body of the sword. So it'll all make sense when I'm putting it together. So, but anyway, that's my plan. So let's uh, cut out the template and lay it on here and uh, start to make our cuts and stuff. All right, so I drilled uh, a couple of holes for my pins. Slide those in there. That actually measures up pretty good. I'm happy with that. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing with these. I'm, I'm, I have some thinner pins. Um, it's gonna be a little trickier because of the angle. So I might just pin one and then put a bracket or something on the back one. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to have to figure that out. Uh, but... So those pieces uh, glued pretty well. The pins are holding nice. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is, I've got my pattern here still. So any of these elements um, here that are drawn on here that I didn't cut out are gonna be the relieved elements, the parts that are coming, sticking off of the, the sword that kind of give it some of its texture and you know, some of its detail and stuff like that. So I'm going to cut these elements out and then transfer the patterns onto, I've got a thin piece of uh, press board here and then I've got another piece of um, MDF board, just another press board, it's a little thicker. And I think with those two elements, um, you know, combined it'll give it a couple different layers of texture and um, kind of help fill out the sword a bit more. Uh, so I'm going to cut out these patterns, I'm going to transfer them onto here, cut these out, and then glue them on, and then we'll be ready for painting.
All right, so I've got my uh, raised elements cut out and I started sanding, uh, beveled edges a little bit just to kind of round them out, um, make them look a little more finished. I still have some work to do on it, I think, just to kind of clean it up. But just want to make sure that the pieces are going to fit on there properly, which it looks like they're going to do. It's going to hide my seams and stuff pretty nicely. So basically, that's what it'll, what it'll look like. It's got those nice kind of raised elements. And then I think I'm going to paint the whole thing black. And I wanted to add some elements of like yellow. So I might paint this whole piece yellow with the black. I think it'll kind of almost give it like a that kind of a hazard or caution kind of a look. Again, kind of, a, kind of industrial looking. And um, yeah, I think that's about what we'll achieve today and tomorrow I'll come in, finish sanding the pieces and start gluing and painting and should be able to wrap it up. So, but all in all, I'm happy with the, the way it's all coming together. It looks cool. It's got a good weight uh, and feel and stuff. So, um, yeah, all right. Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow. All right, so we're back in the shop today. And before I start painting, there are a few elements that I kind of want to refine a little bit and sand. Uh, most of the raised elements, the handle and uh, the piece on the blade here, are pretty, um, are sanded pretty well. There's a few little pieces I just want to refine a little bit. Um, the other thing is I want to add some detail to the handle. Um, so I measured out uh, every centimeter or whatever I just made a little mark and basically what I want to do there's a, there's a grip kind of part on the handle of my knife and it's basically just these notches um, which I think will add a nice kind of element of texture and stuff to the, the sword so I just went through my ruler marked uh, some lines and then just using my uh, rotary tool with a little sanding bit uh, it was easy to just sand away uh, very quickly just to kind of a little groove into each there and give that nice little uh, kind of uh, ribbed texture uh, for the grip uh, that kind of really kind of mirrors the the pocket knife and I think it's going to add a nice little element especially once it's all painted up and stuff like that um, so yeah when I was looking at my drawing I noticed that I had drawn some little screw heads and stuff like that to kind of give the piece a little bit more of that industrial look. And I want to add that into the actual piece as well. Um, rather than add actual, I have like machine screws and stuff, but rather than add those actual screws and give it more weight, and they're not really necessary because I'm going to glue these plates, the, the raised pieces, onto the body of the sword anyway. Um, I have a bunch of these resin castings that I made of different industrial like screw heads and um, machine screws, hex heads, and uh, nuts and bolts and stuff. And I like to use them as detail pieces for certain builds such as this. So I'm gonna add these in place. I, I kind of laid them out the way I want them. I'm gonna drill holes in the plates so that they kind of recess into the actual piece and then I'll just glue them into place. So. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to have kind of marked out where I want them to go. I'm going to just uh, drill a pilot hole that I can drop it into. And then I'm going to glue the plates on, glue the screw heads into place, and then we're going to paint it. So it probably all sounds overly complicated, but it's not. <laughs> all right, so I glued all the pieces on, all of the little machine screw heads, and now we're ready to paint. I'm pretty happy with the overall look and uh, the feel of it. Uh, I'm really excited to start painting it and have it all really come together. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a base coat. I'm just going to do a, bla a flat black and then I'm going to, most of the sword I want to keep black. I'm going to add some uh, semi-gloss coats to give it a little bit of a sheen and then the edging, all of the, 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 the sword edge and stuff and the 
serrated bits, and probably this back handle part are all going to be uh, kind of like a nickel finish or a metallic, like it's worn down, like it's, you know, the actual metal. And then uh, this piece here, I wanted to give it almost that sort of look. I want to incorporate some yellow into it, and I kind of want to do it maybe almost, you know, with, the, with this pattern, this design, it'll look almost like a hazard kind of, or, you know, a caution sort of uh, tape. Um, on there, so this whole piece I think is going to be yellow. Originally, I was just going to do this and not the handle. I was going to do the handle black, but I might do it all yellow. If I don't like it, I can always paint it black. Um, and then this back piece, I'm thinking I'm going to do it the same kind of like chrome or, or nickel kind of finish as the the edging, the actual the edge of the sword. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But that's kind of my, my plan right now. So, all right. So I painted one side of it just to kind of see if it's in the vein that I'm I'm going for. Um, and I have to say that I, I do feel I'm I'm happy with some of the weathering and stuff like that. I do like the splash of yellow, but I think it might be too much, a little off-putting, and. Maybe when I paint the other side, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the handle black, and just paint this part yellow. I almost feel like maybe I, I, I need some caution lines or something like that on the blade or something that really kind of jazz it up. Or possibly maybe just a thin strip of yellow in the handle to kind of help set the whole piece off. I mean, it's a little, I feel like there's something missing. So I'm going to experiment a little bit with the other side and hopefully I find something I'm, I'm happy with. But overall, it's still, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm just, I, I just feel like it's missing some kind of element, so I'm gonna kinda play around with it a little bit. But uh, that's what we have so far, and uh, yeah. So let's kinda hit the other side and see what happens. All right, so on the other side, I did just paint this strip yellow and I kind of minimized it a bit and I think that actually looks better. It doesn't look as distracting. It doesn't take away from the, I don't know, the, just for some reason it just flows a little bit better to me if it still has some of that black and stuff in it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, paint over this handle, paint it black and then finish up with some of the detailing and stuff like that, kind of weather it a little bit more. So I went through and added a little bit of detailing using just some cheap acrylic paint. I mixed up uh, some reds and yellows and blacks and whites and stuff to kind of get kind of a dingy brown, a little bit of a rust color, and uh, just kind of just dabbed it up on some of the, the creases and stuff like that, and a little bit on the highlighted areas, uh, just to give it a little bit of extra worn kind of quality and yeah, get a little more texture to the, the overall piece. Uh, I mean, it looks kind of dingy and uh, like it was forged out of, you know, leftover parts from like a machine or, you know, a spaceship or something. And that's, that's kind of the, the look I was going for. And I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's given me a lot of ideas for other kind of similar swords and knives and stuff like that and weapons to make. Yeah, I mean, this was out of really cheap materials. This was... A uh, piece of poplar wood, I think, uh, I had lying around. Uh, you can get it really cheap at your hardware store, I'm sure. And uh, like some leftover uh, MDF board. As far as like the screws and stuff, those are scrap pieces that I make using leftover resin. I've, I've made a, a, like a mold out of cool machine head, like screw parts and stuff like that that I like to add as detail for builds like this. 
but you could use the real hardware also. Uh, that will run you probably a little bit more money because that hardware is usually a little bit more expensive, but um, you know, or you could just detail it yourself using your Dremel. I'm sure you could create your own different kind of detailing and, and stuff and you know, you guys could go nuts, but so this is my cyber sword or cyberpunk inspired type sword. I don't know. Future sword. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.